So here we have our light controller. The light controller is controlled via here, via the aux out of the MFIA. And I'm also, um, I'm doubling the signal here and feeding it back to the um, aux in one. Um, because in the aux in one, I wanna, I wanna later record the signal as well. So this then, uh, so th this is the, the, the control signal of our light sensor, uh, of, our, of our LED. Um, here I'm in the manual mode. So here I can switch on the LED, but I can also go into the, uh, into the mode of external modulation. Wait. Now here, we're on it. And then I can see that for one volt of input, I can get 400 milliamps of LED drive current. And the LED is just a white LED and we shine onto um, some kind of solar cell, uh, which is then also connected via a two wire, a two terminal measurement with the MFIA. Now to check how accurate the light signal is, we're using a, a photo detector. And the photo detector, um, the, the light is shined on the, the photo detector via this beam splitter. And the photo detector is shown here. All right, so that's the basic setup. And uh, now starting it, you see that it's already blinking. And that is because I've set up the lab one uh, with a uh, pulsed signal to trigger the light source. And this is very similar to setting it up as in the DLTS mode. So uh, from, from last year, uh, you could see that there was the threshold, uh, the threshold unit that produces right now um, a pulse of 500 milliseconds with a pause of 500 milliseconds. So that's the half second on and off um, periods. And I've configured it such that you see here on the output value that we have from zero to 1.5 volts an output. And you see it on, because it's, it's connected to the output three, uh, we see here on the output three that it's oscillating between zero or it's jumping between zero and 1.5. And we're reading it again with the AUX input two. And there you see this is uh, give or take uh, seven or eight millivolts. That's what arrives also at input two. And input one, there is the light sensor. And you see that those are moving uh, in, the in the same direction at the same time. So now we wanna look at here in the scope, how well does that work? So um, we're triggering um, uh, at a rise time here and we're comparing the AUX in one and the AUX in two. So that's the sensor signal and that's the drive signal. And if we do this, we see the following. We see that in orange, the drive signal starts here at minus 15, minus 17 uh, microseconds. So we're here in microseconds. And you see that the sensor signal is a bit delayed here. So that means that if we want to compare some current or some, some capacity, we should look at the sensor signal because that's uh, a much better a reference for how much light is, is uh, how much light does the sample see during that measurement. So that's the that's uh, our our signals. Now let's see what we want to look at. We want to look at capacity. And now uh, I'm going to open this here. We're measuring at 50 kilohertz with an amplitude of 100 milli uh, volt. We're having a, a bias voltage. Um, so this is not a new uh, solar cell that I'm measuring here. It's just to show the principle. So I've chosen some uh, intermediate uh, bias voltage just to show that, it, that it's working out. And you see that we are measuring a capacity in nanofarad. And here on this, uh, in the measurement results, you already see that it's somehow oscillating between 1.7 and 2.2. So that's very good. Um, we want to look at it in the time domain. 
And here we see that once we switch on the light, there is a transient in the capacity. And that comes with quite, uh, uh, quite some spike. Um, and now here we can, we can check if our, um, our measurement is well configured. But um, if we want to know more in detail, we go to the, to the DAC unit, um, data acquisition. And here we are also triggering uh, the signal. And then we can see that here, uh, this always jumps in, I'm sorry about that. Um, we can see that this is our capacity transient. And our capacity transient actually is here for the solar cell is in, um, is in the millisecond range. So here you see the spike and then um, a saturation here. And I've plotted here the both signals, the trigger signal and the light sensor signal. They are in the, in the microseconds delay range. So they're here one line. So it doesn't matter for this measurement because the solar cell reacts uh, with, uh, with uh, slower dynamics. But it shows you very nicely that here we can visualize very well and then look at these values of our uh, capacity spike as a result of our um, of our light pulse. All right, so this was uh, number one. So uh, we, we have basically used the same technique as for DLTS with a voltage pulse, but we have modified it into a light pulse and also looked at the transients. Um, 